So anyway, the Scorpio yeah. uh, tech specs <laughs> allegedly revealed. Digital yeah. Foundry got their hands on a technical white paper, and here's the short version of what they were able to learn. Do you want to read it, Ryan? Yeah. So uh, the Digital Foundry guys at Eurogamer, whose entire niche, which is a wonderful niche that they carve out, is just analyzing. You know, they, they do a lot with like frame rate testing and image quality in games. Well, they they uh, got their hands on a white paper, which is sort of a technical spec document. Mm -hmm for Scorpio, dated July of 2016, so right after the E3 reveal. The thing is, though, a lot of people have been asking me, oh, is it? it's probably changed since then, right? Like, yeah. It's not really how hardware works. Yeah. It's, it has to be taped out and really set way, way in advance. It's not saying it can't, like it's impossible to change, it could, but uh, I mean, the, the Xbox 360, famous story, they doubled the RAM from 256 mm -hmm. megs to 512 very late, late in the game, but odds are, this document that uh, Digital Foundry got a hold of was accurate. So we didn't learn any sort of huge revelations, but we learned that it's got four times the L2 cache, which is a good thing on the processor department. Delta color compression, I can't tell you what that is. That's that's open. Uh, oh, the DCC? It's Delta the Squad? The D, yeah, the, yeah. the DCC uh, That's a Gears of War reference. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we also learned that, uh, and it does look like the system's got 12 gigs of RAM, which is what was sort of speculated, that it, it can also and will have a... Uh, a, a rendering technique very, very similar, if not practically identical, to the checkerboarding technique that the PS4 Pro uses to... Um, what's, the, what's the nice way to say this, Marty, without, without fanboys getting riled up to... It's not native 4K, but it is a... Upscale? It is kind of an upscale. Yeah. yeah, but it's a really... Like, it looks awesome. Yeah. It looks great when you do it. And uh, we learned that it's... There's no ES RAM, which is sort of the, that's like the big, probably the biggest hardware differentiator between the PS4 and Xbox One, which are extremely similar architecturally otherwise, whereas the PS4 has 8 gigs of uh, GDDR5, faster memory, the, the Xbox One has GDDR3, but then this little 32, big, 32 meg cache of ES RAM, which is a super fast RAM, but it has to be, you know, it's got its advantages and disadvantages, so that, that is apparently absent Wow, uh, or presumably absent. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say definitively because, it, yeah. But it's it's it. There's no mention I, of it. I don't know what most of that means, but this thing sounds full blown next gen to me, and I know <laughs> nothing. Thanks, Destin. <laughs> get, uh, get do get we ahead of me. do we know how Digital Foundry got their hands on? Uh, I don't know if he said. I did watch Richard Ledbetter's video, but uh, I don't remember if he said how he got it. But he was able to verify its its okay. authenticity. Mm -hmm. So I. What, give you an opening. I know. Yeah, I appreciate sorry. you. I just wanted to ask that question first. <laughs> what, uh, what all this boils down to? Uh, so then, yeah, you had Ori, and, the Ori in the Blind Forest, one of their who developers, who actually knows stuff, who actually knows things. This guy, uh, Thomas Mailer, he posted on NeoGaf saying Scorpio is quote full blown a full blown next gen machine. Thank you, Destin. <laughs> Thank you. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> but really, but you know, the, in, in kind of the discussion of this, I, again, I watched uh, Digital Foundry's video because. I know a little bit about tech things, but not even a tenth of what they know. And they did their video; I thought did a really good job of explaining it. Mm -hmm. And it really sounds to me like uh, the, the, the sort of takeaway that he had was that this is probably based off of the same AMD Jaguar CPU architecture, uh, rather than there's the newer sort of the next gen version of that is the Ryzen, the Zen. So it looks like it's not the new the new Zen, but it's not the Ryzen. It, do, it appears to not be. That's confusing because that New Horizons video that we saw advertises it as being AMD and Ryzen together. That was like there was a screenshot taken at right CES, mm. right? Yeah, so yeah. that's odd. So again, maybe that it's possible that's changed. Remember this this is from yeah, July of last true. year, so it is possible it's changed. But I think the greater point that my takeaway from this, from reading some of the discussion and looking at it myself, and I want to see what you guys think. It seems that maybe on paper. This thing, the Scorpio, is going to be a little bit closer to a PS4 Pro Pro than a than a full-on Xbox Four. Mm -hmm. That's and I know I'm already going to get hate tweets and and comments for just saying How that. How dare you say Pro Pro <laughs> and also but, Xbox Four? But I think whether that's true or not, what I think is important. Something I've been thinking about a little while. I think people need to sort of. M properly manage their expectations for what Scorpio is going to be. Yeah. I also, just 
towards in everything general. in general. In general. But <laughs> Always. I, I know I've witnessed it, and I'm sure you guys have too, that you know, the Xbox, the, the failings and mistakes of, of Microsoft with the Xbox One around its launch and leading up to its launch were, are well documented at this point. And, you know, the console went from number one in North America and to, to you know, a distant worldwide number two now. And I think Scorpio has been this almost People are looking messianic at it as a figure. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. They're looking at it as the thing that puts uh, Xbox ahead in terms of tech and hardware, so they really want that. And I think that it's just a brand loyalty thing. It is. It yeah. absolutely is. But I just think it's important to uh, to understand that it, it this is just going to be a faster Xbox One. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not going to... Probably, it's probably not going to change your life. I mean, they straight up said at E3 that the... These are, they're not going to be new games for this. Like right. The, the games that you buy and play on Scorpio, you're going to be able to buy and play on your launch Xbox One. So that's, yeah, I mean, what you said of it being more akin to a Pro Pro as opposed to a full-blown, you know, leap into a next-gen system, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's yeah. what I always expected, yeah, but I, totally. I still, you know, we've spoken about it a million times, so it's still totally have my hopes up that it's going to bring VR to Xbox. That I maybe should not be thinking that because I'm so excited about the idea of it that I should just dial it back. What but did I we want say about so tempering expectations? <laughs> but VR. You guys are all saying that. I'm not going to heed any of your advice. I'm going to continue to be overly optimistic about this. I think this is a big bet for Microsoft, and uh, I'm playing devil's advocate partially, but uh, I, I'm really excited about it. Until I see that box, I know when I see that box, I'm gonna be. That's when I'm gonna get really, really hopeful about the future of yeah. Xbox. Uh, and uh, uh, when a dev is saying this thing's full blown next gen, um, I mean, he's probably accessing it for the first time and being like, "Oh my god, look at all these resources I have available." Man, I've been developing for this other platform, the PS4 Pro. Well, they they, no, have they haven't, or he's just on Xbox. I'm. Sh <laughs> I'm sure they know people who's worked on the PS4 Pro sure. yeah. and the limitations there but versus the Scorpio. I'm, I'm going to stay excited. I mean, there's not limitations on the Pro. Like the Pro is currently the most powerful piece of hardware on the market, right? The yeah. PC. But I think that's not hardware. I don't Console. care about that. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's, that's not that's not real. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, here's what I worry about with with the Xbox community and and Scorpio is kind of the the No Man's Sky effect yeah. where. No Man's Sky and Scorpio both announced very early with sort of pretty high level details only. Like here's what here's what we're going yeah. for, and then over the long stretch of time before they finally released, there's this people build up this idea of what they think it is, and and this <sighs> ideal of what it what it could be, where and then the final product. I mean, just can't in this in this case no man's sky didn't anyway mm -hmm. uh even though it's a fine game it's, it's not a great game but i worry that that's happening with people with scorpio where they've built it up to be because yeah. you know, because microsoft's whole thing is and they're not lying when they say it's the most powerful console ever made yeah. it will be mm -hmm. but i worry that that just and they did say six teraflops but it's you know we don't know what six teraflops looks like yeah. on a screen i just worry that people are going to they're setting themselves up for a letdown when this is a really good console, but not a total generational leap that you, a lot of people, I think, are wanting I feel like the No Man's Sky to. parallel doesn't quite work because there was miscommunication in the marketing of that, right? That's fair. They promised things yeah, that's fair. that didn't end up happening and potentially never could have happened. It was just, they didn't have PR, you know? It was it was. Yeah. Badly, okay. I mean, totally agree. And all Xbox is saying is, "Hey, this will be the most powerful home right. console." Right. And, and so on that, I don't feel like by a significant margin. Yeah, I don't feel like too many people are being um, overly excited about it. Uh, in that, you know, I mean, we don't know anything about it. We want it to be a really good console. We want it to run games really well. But I feel like, like I haven't seen anyone comment that they think this is going to be the best thing ever made or that ever will be I mean, made. I, not, I, I have. I have. Okay, the, the fact of the matter is, like, <laughs> none of these things matter. To me, because none of these things will make a bad game good, it will make a good game better. Right. But and the fact of the matter is, all I care about is how are the games going to be. You're a hundred percent right, like, Marty, and that's why yeah. E3 is so important for yeah, Microsoft. Totally. They need to come out of that gate swinging. Yeah. I guess my point is to, to you're, I agree with you about the No Man's Sky thing. Maybe it's not the best comparison, but I guess my point is Microsoft. It, they calculated the pros and cons of announcing so early yeah. at E3 last year. Yeah where they knew they weren't going to be able to give full details 
and that, you know they knew there were there were advantages to that and disadvantages to announcing so early. But I just worry that the the fact that they they have only offered a few vague rough details uh, that 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 plus time in some sort of math equation equals inflated Too expectations. Sure. It's the watchdog's it, one effect, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, obviously E3 will will reveal a lot more, but um, I just think people should be prepared for this to be a nice upgrade, but not any sort of savior that's going to magically turn the Xbox into the number one selling console in the world. It, Maybe it will, I, but you know, it's uh, it's it'll it's going to be an upgrade, but just watch, I mean, check your expectations of how much it's really it's, going to. It's three shows, software moves hardware. So it's going to be all about the games. Yeah, and I mean, you're effectively pushing a common sense caution. <laughs> like, just, you know, don't be overexcited. We, we, I don't about think we like, allow that in today's society <laughs> anymore. That's, no. There's but, no room uh, for that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm excited about it, but not in a way that I think that I can be disappointed about it. Because everything that I know is based off of things that we've seen and in that trailer. Like, I definitely don't think I'm going to be disappointed in any way. But I'm also, yeah, I didn't expect it to be Xbox 4, and then I didn't expect it to replace the Xbox One. So, right. but I've I'm just, I've I've seen a lot of commentary online from those uh, some of those Xbox diehard faithful that really are sort of pinning a lot of their hopes on mm. on this being. I think that's going to be the best thing awesome. ever. That's kind of what yeah. I'm like. I'm like maybe people should be allowed to be excited. Like, no, it's it's it not is. that at all. It's, I feel like you're seeing. Totally I just I see the backlash coming. Yeah, that's I yeah. I can see it on the horizon. Yeah, like, like just, if you don't want the No Man's Sky effect, you don't want people to get too excited and then hate this thing. Like exactly. I, get, I get that. Yeah, I want it to be. I want to see Scorpio's release be a celebratory fun event and not a. Oh, it's not as good as I thought it was going to be, and I don't. I don't want it to see it see it ruined and turned into a negative. Mm -hmm. I, I negative get thing. I get where you're coming from. I trust Phil. I don't trust the people who were there before, and uh, they've kind of cleaned house. And I trust the people in charge right now to give us good stuff because they've that's all they've done since they've taken over is improve. That's true. So well, I'm I mean, very hopeful for the Scorpio and excited about it. I mean, I wasn't here for the whole you know scale bound discussion. It got canceled. Yeah, yeah, I heard yeah, about that. Uh, yeah. The collector's edition is but. not coming with a dragon. <laughs> yeah, um, unfortunately. Yeah, but I will say on the plus side, if if this white paper does sort of indicate that it's it's based on the same architecture, but you know, pumped way up, that does make it more probable that it hits that three ninety nine price point that we've discussed yeah. the the importance of. I again, to reiterate, I just I don't think being I don't care how powerful it is. Given Microsoft's position in the market relative to their competitor, they cannot sell this thing for a dime over three three ninety nine. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. just I don't I think it's doesn't matter how powerful it is. Yeah, especially when at that time a PS4 will probably be half the price of it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 